In this video I'll show you some of the basic features of the park uh, signal generator that's going to be built at the upcoming uh, spring build-a-thon and uh, the idea for this came from my original signal generator which had uh, uh, several limitations it could uh, only it was a two-line LCD and so from the LCD I could only turn on one of the three outputs from the SI5351 so what I decided to do was to move this to a 4x20 uh, uh, LCD and uh, upgrade the board uh, to give a little bit more features so here's the prototype of the board that I etched and uh, basically there is an Arduino Nano at the heart of it that's controlling everything there's an SI5351 and it's got three clock outputs and uh, the Arduino can turn on and off any of the three uh, clocks there's also a um, two push buttons and uh, a rotary encoder and the way the push buttons are uh, function is that there's one that's a, a uh, enter or a next function and the other push button is a previous or go back button. There's also a 4x20 LCD which is connected via I squared C to the Arduino Nano. And if I was to reset the Arduino Nano, see as it comes up it displays the version and it comes up into this mode here. The configuration of the LCD is pretty straightforward. It's, uh, it's got four lines. The first three lines is showing the configuration of each of the clocks for the SI5351. So the first line is showing the configuration for clock 0, clock 1, clock 3. And the fourth line is used to show the menu, uh, to show a menu option. So for example, you could see the cursors uh, flashing here. So that means it's in menu mode and uh, if I was to press one of the push buttons it would allow me to go and change the configuration in the, the clock configuration window here. So the clock configuration window is showing the frequency of the clock. So here it's showing the frequency of clock 0. Here's the frequency of clock 1, frequency of clock 2. And it's also showing the mode associated with that uh, clock and it's also showing whether it's on and off. So in this case each of the clocks is are off. So if I was to go and turn the rotary encoder now I would change the menu option. So there it's changed over to LO mode. It's changed over to IQ, calibrate, save, etc. And if I was to press the, the forward button or the enter button, see the cursor now moves into the clock window. And now the rotary encoder allows me to change between the clocks. So there I'm on clock one, there I'm on clock two, I'm back to clock one. If I want to come back to the menu mode, I I press the back button or the previous button and it takes me back. You can see the cursor there flashing in, in the uh, menu uh, line. So now when I'm back in clock mode I'm now um, the cursor is now in clock zero. If I was to press the next button see it turns on that clock and the cursor jumps to the frequency and uh, there I can change the frequency right there it's set to the maximum so I can't go higher than that but I can go down in frequency and if I push the rotary encoder button 
it allows me to change to the various digits so I can alter them. And if I want to go back, I press the back button and it takes me back to um, the clock window where I can now change to the next clock, press the next button, turn it off. If I wanted to turn it off, uh, just press the uh, next button again, turns it off, press the next button, turns it off. So I could cycle through it by turning it on and off. And if I push the next button, it takes me back out where I can uh, select a clock. If I press the next button again, or not the next button, the previous button, it takes me back out and now I can uh, select a, a menu option. So there are three modes that uh, the clocks can run in. One is VFO mode, one is a local oscillator mode, and uh, the other mode is I and Q mode. The VFO mode is pretty straightforward. It's uh, basically going to take whatever frequency is displayed here and it's going to program the SI5351 to put that frequency out on that uh, clock port. The way the LO mode works, it assumes that you've got a mixer and you've got some intermediate frequency feeding the mixer and uh, it's going to be mixed with the LO pro producing an RF signal coming out. So the RF is going to be the LO plus the IF or the LO minus the IF. So in LO mode on the SIGGEN, what it's going to do, it's going to display the RF on the LCD. So it's not going to display the local oscillator that's actually feeding the mixer. It's going to display what the frequency is coming out. So it's going to take whatever local oscillator it's sending to the SI5351, whatever frequency the SI5351 is putting out, and it's going to add or, or subtract an offset, which is this IF frequency. So in order to use the, the LO mode, you'll have to define an, an offset which you will add or subtract to the LO and that gets displayed on the LCD. With the SIGGEN I can go in, I can go and I can set my offset so if I was to go next press the next button here I can set the offset associated with each of the clocks so here's offset 0 it's set right now to minus 50 megahertz. Offset 1 is also set to minus 50 megahertz. And offset 2 is set to 1 plus 1 megahertz. So what's going to be displayed when I go into LO mode is going to be the LO frequency minus 50 megahertz. Or in the case of clock 1, whatever uh, uh, frequency the SI53 is putting out in clock 1. It's going to take that frequency, minus 50 megahertz, and display that on the, the LCD. Press the back button, come out to the menu, and I go back to, to the yellow enable. Okay, so you'll see now the frequencies here. It, this is showing 60 megahertz, so I was uh, subtracting 50 megahertz from the local oscillator so that means that the local oscillator here the the output for clock zero um, which I'm calling the local oscillator the output from clock zero is going to be 60 plus 50 megahertz because I'm taking the local oscillator local oscillator frequency which is uh, which was 110 megahertz subtracting 50 and I'm getting 60 megahertz similarly for frequency one it's showing 150 megahertz here and I was subtracting 50 megahertz from the actual frequency coming out, the yellow frequency that's com coming out of clock 1 so therefore uh, this clock is actually running at 200 megahertz and uh, here this offset was set to plus 
uh, one megahertz so uh, the the output from clock two is actually uh, eight kilohertz and uh, just with the VFO mode if I press the next button it turns on that frequency and I can adjust I can change the frequency and I can press the next come back and change to another clock and so forth the IQ mode is uh, fairly straightforward and what that's going to do it that's going to put uh, quadrature output on clock 0 and 2 clock 1 is turned off so it's going to show uh, the same frequency in clock 0 and 2 so the same frequency is going to come out of clock 0 clock 2 except they'll be 90 degrees out of phase so if I was to go ahead and uh, press the next button see I go in and uh, it pops me into the frequency where I could change the frequency it's telling me I'm in IQ mode and it's on so right now clock 0 and clock 2 are putting out quadrature signals at 14 megahertz and I can take the rotary encoder and I can change that frequency and notice it's it's uh, changing both the frequency for clock 0 and 2 and if I was to hit the next button I'll just go I just ping pong between the clocks and I press the next button and I come to the menu option the next menu option is the calibrate so basically in calibrate that allows you to calibrate the SI5351 so so whatever frequencies you've got defined for the VFO frequencies that's that's what's going to be put out when you're in calibrate mode and uh, in this mode um, you will um, change you can change the calibration constant here uh, the correction uh, factor for the SI5351 you could change that with the rotary encoder and if you hit the next button it saves it the next menu function is the save option which allows you to save um, the configured frequencies that you've got for your VFO for your your LO and for your IQ as well as the SI5351 correction it allows you to save it in one of uh, four memory locations so these four memory locations are stored on the EEPROM uh, in the Nano and uh, as I said it's going to contain any VFO frequencies you've got to find any LO offsets you've got to find uh, an I, any I and Q frequencies as well as the SI5351 uh, uh, correction so it's it can store those values in up to uh, four values one of four memory locations the way the memory locations are set up is that memory location zero is used for startup or power up so that's all the settings that's going to be used when the um, SIGGEN powers up for the first time or there's a, a reset. Uh, memory locations 1, 2, and 3 are available for general use. But uh, if you store anything in 0, if you power, in, uh, power off and power on the SIGGEN, it's going to use the values there. Uh, one important thing to note is that I did not implement autosave so the power on defaults is not auto saved you have to manually set it and the reason I did that is because the Nano's EEPROM has a, um, a, a limited number of writes before the um, EEPROM gets damaged or it fails so I didn't bother doing an auto save and instead you have to manually go and save 
your power up default. So to use the save option all you would do is navigate and get the save option here in the menu bar and you would press the next button and then it comes up here and it prompts you to enter the memory location so right there it would save it to memory location 1 you could change that to memory location 0 1 2 or 3 so let's go ahead and let's save that to memory location 3 so once you select your number press the next button and it saves it into memory location 3 the next option is the recall function which allows you to load the frequencies that were saved in one of the memory locations so to use this you would use it exactly the same as save you would press the next button and you would select the location from which you want to load the values so in this case let's load it from location 1 and uh, the screen changes with the new updated uh, information one thing you should note about the recall function is if you were to recall information from a undefined location so in this case I don't have any information stored in location 2 and if I was to recall information from it I would get a memory error Uh, then finally there's the reset option which just if you execute that it just resets the signal generator.